Hallelujah. I want to speak to you for a few moments this morning from the book of Ezekiel. Very, very briefly. Hallelujah. We will not read much. But this I will tell you. Amen. We can read Ezekiel 37 chapter and the first verse. We can just read that and the Lord is going to bless these words. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's a practice for you all to read aloud. But in India we do. And so that's just what we'll do. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. Everybody say midst of the valley this morning, please. In the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Amen. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there was very many in an open valley and indeed they were very dry and he said to me son of man can these bones live hallelujah hallelujah can these bones live i want to speak to you for a few minutes from these verses this morning you may be seated please hallelujah the word of the me the meaning of the name ezekiel means the lord is my strength hallelujah when you're weak the lord is your strength hallelujah and he was the son of buzai as we read in chapter one and he was an anointed priest of god Right, He was serving the Lord and he was in the ministry. He was working. He was being faithful. When suddenly one morning the Lord said, Ezekiel, I need you to be my mouth. I need you to be my prophet. I need you to look far into the future. And I promise to take you to places that you've never been before in all your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Ezekiel being the strength that he was obeyed the unseen God of the Old Testament hallelujah it's very difficult to obey God it challenges every fiber of your being it makes you so uncomfortable that you just don't want to do it anymore hallelujah but Ezekiel obeyed God he said yes Lord here I am do what you want to with me hallelujah so from priest, he went to prophet and prophets back in the old day were not comfortable. Hallelujah. True religion is never comfortable. True doctrine is never comfortable. Hallelujah. Apostolic living is never comfortable. But trust me, the Lord is getting ready to do a work in your lives. Oh, hallelujah. He obeyed the voice of God and the Lord showed him visions. Visions that were so plain. They were so vivid that even when you read them today, your eyes just pop open at the very words that are in front of you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Smiths are wonderful people. Don't you love them? They were so kind. I mean, I shouldn't say they were. They are so kind to us. They took us yesterday to this place called the Museum of the Bible. And it was such an overwhelming experience for me because the word was everywhere. Amen. Amen. And I realized that the word can stand alone on its own. It does not need help or support from people like you or me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. Lift your hands and say, Lord, your word is powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. As I saw the scripture flash in front of my eyes and behind me and before me, I said, Lord, you don't need us. Your word is enough. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your word is singularly enough to do the work in our lives. Yeah. You, Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Almost 49 times in the book of Ezekiel, it says, I am your Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. It was not because Ezekiel was comfortable. Ezekiel was in distress. Ezekiel was in pain. Ezekiel was in spiritual agony. And every time he felt like throwing in the blanket, the Lord said, Ezekiel, I am your Lord. I am your sustenance. I am your provider. I am your protector. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. 
all through Ezekiel. I urge you when you go back home, just grab a copy and read Ezekiel. Everywhere you see the word of the Lord, 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 the word of the Lord. 37 chapters go by. When Ezekiel has seen, he has heard, he has seen. Oh, I'm telling you, he has seen, hallelujah, things in the spirit that nobody has ever seen in the history of the Old Testament. Hallelujah. And now, in 37.1, it says, the hand of the Lord came upon me. I want to tell you, if you're in the word of the Lord, it doesn't take much time for the hand of the Lord to come upon you. Come Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord. Have you even realized how powerful those words are? Thank you, Lord. These hands were the hands that fashioned the earth from nothing. Yes. These hands were the hands that made Adam from the dust of the earth. Oh. These hands are the ones that led the people out of Egypt into the promised land. These very hands were nailed for us on Calvary. Hallelujah. It is not an easy thing for the hand of the Lord to come upon you. Hallelujah. And Ezekiel was feeling the weight of the hand of the Lord upon his shoulders. Oh, that is so powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He was feeling the hand of the Lord. Well, you have many hands in your life. The hands of your husband, the hands of your children, the hands of your pastor, the hands of your first lady, the hands of your friends, the hands of your neighbor, but they don't feel anything like the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. In his presence, you will bow. In his presence, you will fall and you will say, yes, I recognize that this is a supernatural hand. A hand that sustained me. A hand that rescued me. A hand that still holds me. Hallelujah. If we didn't die in COVID, it was because the hand of the Lord was upon our very lives. If you agree with me, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap this morning? We are alive. We are breathing. We are speaking. We are not confined in a hospital room. We are not isolated because the hand of the Lord is upon us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. And let me tell you, when the hand of the Lord is upon you, you have one single purpose in life, and that is to glorify God. Yes. Your lives must be a walking testimony of His glory. Yes. Hallelujah. If it was true in the days of the apostles, when you walk those streets, healing must come. Thank you. When you minister to someone, salvation must come. Yes. Hallelujah. When you lay your hands on someone, the dead must be raised. For the hand of the Lord is upon you this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your whole purpose is to glorify this God. Yeah. Your life has no other purpose. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. I tell my children, if you live, live for the glory of God. Hallelujah. You do things, you do it for the glory of God. For the word tells us whether you eat or whether you drink or whether you do anything, just do it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. His hand is upon you this morning. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus. So now the hand of the Lord is upon Ezekiel. Ezekiel is glorifying God through his work and through his ministry and through his prophecy. Oh, and when the hand of the Lord is upon you, let me tell you something, saints. He's getting ready to move you. Yeah. Amen. The hand of the Lord is not an object. The hand of the Lord is a hand of the omnipresent, omniscient God who is giving you that push to go to the next level. From what I seen to what I see now, the hand of the Lord has moved you. Hallelujah. 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 And he always makes you uncomfortable. He's not a God who, who revels in making you comfortable. No deck chairs and lemonades and sun hats. No, 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 no. Not the God that we serve. 
get on a plane, fly 24 hours across the oceans so you can go and be a witness of my glory to the people around the world. Hallelujah. It's scary. It's intimidating. It is afraid. Hallelujah. But when he's getting ready to move you, no man can stop you. Hallelujah. No illness can stop you. Hallelujah. No fear can stop you. Hallelujah. No intimidation can stop you. Because when the hand of the Lord is upon you, you're getting ready to move. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to move. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. To a better place. To a better place. I'm getting ready to move to a better place. Hallelujah. Oh, the word says, the spirit of the Lord was upon me. Amen. For those, those of you who are new this morning, this is the way we roll, y'all. This is the true church of God. Hallelujah. The anointed Jesus name, baptizing, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, miracle working, shamelessly living church of God is the true church of God. If you belong to the true church, why don't you just clap your hands and say, yes, Lord, I'm glad to be a part of this holy family. I'm excited. Yes, I am. Because the Lord is worthy of my excitement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord. Oh, when the Spirit of the Lord comes into your depths, when the Spirit of the Lord is working things in your body, in your soul, in your DNA, the people around you are watching you because there's something different about you. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. It is so powerful. That when you walk into a room, people stand. Not because of you. Not because of your personality. Not because of how educated you are. But they can see that the one inside you is more powerful than the one in the world. Such spiritual authority the Lord has given you this morning. Aren't you glad to have the keys to things that, that the world is so badly wanting? The keys are in your hands. Hallelujah. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, Adonai, we worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord was upon me. And I knew that I had to move to another place. Hallelujah. Oh, but let me tell you, you need to practice being in the spirit of God. It's not on on Sunday morning and it's not off on Sunday afternoon. Every day, every minute, every season of your life, you practice being in the presence and in the spirit of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. When you're called and chosen, you have a mandate to be in the spirit of God 24 by 7. Mask or no mask. COVID or no COVID. Hallelujah. Whether the church is shutting down or whether it is online. It is your mandate to be in the presence and the spirit of the Lord. You got to practice the spirit. You got to practice the spirit. How do I practice the spirit, Lord? When I'm driving to school to pick my babies, that's the time that I practice the spirit of the Lord. You know, for us women, it's very difficult to practice the spirit of the Lord. It's very difficult to practice the presence of the Lord because we've got people to feed and meals to cook and diapers to change and folks to send out of home. When are you going to pray in the presence of the Lord? At any time that you are able hallelujah don't beat yourself down amen allow yourself to practice the spirit when and where you can jesus hallelujah i've been watching people drive here it gets me a little scared so i told i told brother brother smith and sister ebony i know what y'all need 
Y'all need some crazy Indian people in the middle of your traffic. <laughs> so you just, you can't drive at the speeds that you're driving here back home. You know, and this morning I was listening to Sister Ebony tell Sister Felicia, our dear new sister in Christ, uh, you know, Sister Felicia, there are cows in India on the road. And she went like, what? <laughs> I tell you, there are goats and donkeys and dogs and cats too. Okay, we have a whole circus going on on the roads. Yeah, and we have a whole circus. It is difficult to be apostolic when you drive in my nation. It is very difficult. I have to remind Pastor Hobday, but you are a pastor. Don't hoot that horn so hard. Just let it go. <laughs> love them with the love of Jesus. <laughs> and he's like, <clears throat> you know what that means now. <laughs> So when pastor's home, um, the, the way we live, you know, we, we, live, we live in crazy places. So the, the way we know that he comes home is like when he goes, bam, 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 and my girls are like, mommy, daddy's home. As opposed to the very decent way of knocking on the door and saying, honey, I'm home. No, we don't do that. We go, ah, ah, I'm home. Y'all must come to India and visit us sometime. <laughs> You will get a taste of all this. Well, the reason I'm saying this, when I'm driving on the roads and I'm listening to something on my... I have a small car. Okay, when I say small, I really mean small. I look large in it. So picturize it, right? <laughs> give some work for your imagination. Come on, y'all. Give a high five to someone next to you. Okay, come on. I know you can air bump, fist bump, do whatever bump you want. I, I don't care. Because this is the house of the Lord and you are safest in the house of the Lord. Yeah. You are safest in the house of the Lord. There's no place on earth you'd rather be. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the, uh, the dear announcer was saying no hugging, I was like, oh my goodness, I've broken every rule in the book just in two minutes after I came. I've been hugging people crazy. Hey, but I didn't sit in one place 24 hours to not come here and hug you. I came here to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, so I'm, I'm driving and I'm seeing things around me and suddenly the, the Spirit of the Lord will begin to minister to me and I'll just look up at heaven, you know, I'll just look up at the skies and tears will be pouring down my face and I'll be speaking in tongues and you know, the guy next to me at the, at the signal, you, we don't have space, you all at traffic lights, we're just so close to each other, he'll be looking inside the window and he's like, what's wrong with this lady? Yeah, I want to roll my window down and tell him I'm practicing the Spirit of the Lord. I'm practicing to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm enjoying my conversation in my new tongue with Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying, but he knows what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to press, practice being in the presence of the Lord. It becomes a lifestyle. You are in the museum of the Bible and people around you are looking at things and I'm speaking in, in tongues in my mask because I cannot hold the Spirit of the Lord within me. Ever felt that? You cannot hold not speaking in tongues. You cannot hold going over to a neighbor, a brother, a sister and saying, we love you with the love of Jesus. Hallelujah! That's who you are. Don't deny it. That's who you are. Don't be someone else. Hallelujah. If you had seen me before the Holy Ghost, I was not one bit like this. I'd be shaking to get into a room and I'd be thinking everybody's looking at me. They're not. Trust me, they're not. But when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, things changed upside down. Aren't we called to serve an upside down kingdom? <laughs> Amen. It changed. This became natural. The word of the Lord became a natural thing. Preaching became a natural thing. Teaching became a natural thing. It's not because of who I am. It's because of who he is. When I was sitting on that chair, sure did feel good for a little while. It was soft and nice. And I felt the Lord nudge me and say, you better fall on your knees right now. We don't belong in those high places. I'm telling you, we don't belong in those high, isolated places. We belong where the Spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. And that can be in the valley of dry bones. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. So he says, Ezekiel, well now, 
Come on, buddy. I've got my hand on you. I've got my spirit in you. Let's go for a walk. And Ezekiel is like, yes, Lord, let's do this thing. Yeah, we have, we have so much to do. But where does the Lord take a priest from the tribe of Levi who is not supposed to touch dead and unclean things too? Sometimes we have an attitude. Hey, I'm so and so. Yeah, I don't want to do that. It's beneath me. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't know about y'all, but we have a lot of folk with attitude back home. The one thing here and another thing when they walk out the door. Amen. And you know that God is watching you. I tell my children that. I said, Samara, do you know that God is watching you? He watches what you watch on your phone. Amen. He watches your texts. He watches your messages. He watches your attitude. He watches what you do in secret places. He is an all-knowing, all-seeing God. And how dare we have an attitude in front of him who breathed on us to cause us to have life? Is anyone bigger than God? I ask you. Amen. Ezekiel didn't have an attitude. He said, Lord, take me where you want to. And the priest of God was walking in a valley. For yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Ezekiel was studying at the feet of Jeremiah when he began writing his prophecies in Babylon as a captive. Prophecy will flow when you're captive. Prophecy will flow when you're shut down with no place to go. Prophecy will shut down when everything around you has closed down. But the Spirit of the Lord is talking to you and saying, Open your mouth now. Prophesy. Come on, prophesy. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Can someone feel the Holy Ghost in here? I can. Hallelujah. He studied at the feet of Jeremiah. We need our elders. We need the man of God. We need to submit under his feet and say, Jesus, let this man bless me. Oh, we got attitude. He said, there's a clock right in front of you, Sister Hobday, Brother Bishop Marcus. I'm not looking at that clock now. Hallelujah. I said, what time you all go to lunch here? You, you can stay a little longer. I flew a long ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have attitude. We walk up to the man of God and say, I don't need your anointing no more. I'm on my own. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. We need to be submitted to the Jeremiah's in our lives. Come on now. Someone give the Lord a hand clap. We need to be submitted to the Jeremiah's in our life. Hallelujah. We need their anointing to rest in our lives. Hallelujah. We need their anointing to minister in our lives when the bones are dry within us. Oh, hallelujah. Attitude, I say. Ezekiel was set in the middle of the valley of bones. It's a scary place. Imagine it. There's a skull there. There's a thigh bone there. There's a breast bone there somewhere. There are fingers and th there are phalanxes and there are toes and there are pieces of bones everywhere. Oh, I know some of you are telling me, hey, listen, that's metaphor. But I'm telling you, no. It was a valley of extreme dryness and death. Sometimes Jesus needs COVID to remind us of who he is. Hallelujah. He was walking. He was walking between those bones. And in his mind, he's like, oh my goodness, that could have been somebody that I knew. 
They didn't let us have funerals in India when we lost loved ones. We just had to toss them in a grave. We couldn't go to the funerals. We couldn't hug the families that were hurting. Delta had a field day when the world's most populous nation was battling this deadly virus. Hallelujah. He was walking around the valley of dry bones and he was like, maybe that's someone I knew. Oh, maybe that's somebody that lived close to me. Oh, maybe that's someone that's, this just is, oh, oh, it's too much for me to handle. There are too many bones. There is too much death. I cannot handle it. Ever felt that way? Where you cannot handle things? Well, I'll tell you, the best thing to do is to stop complaining and start praising. You know, sometimes us preachers, we go on the self-pity mode. I'm talking to myself here. Lord, I did this and this and this and this and this to you. Lord, I did this and this and this and this and this to you. But the word of God says, there were 700 more like you, Elijah. You're not the only one. Hallelujah. Just stop having those pretty parties and get on. Move on. The hand of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is moving you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Self-pity is the biggest sin that a Christian can have in his life. We never feel sorry for ourselves because we were not the ones hanging on Calvary's hill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He didn't feel sorry. He didn't feel sorry. He said, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, Lord. I'm walking. I'm walking with bones that have no flesh on them, oh God. I'm walking in a valley of extreme dryness, my God. The moisture is sucked out of those bones. I'm telling you something. The enemy loves to suck the moisture out of our lives. He sucks it with this big giant straw that you don't even see. Hallelujah. He was walking in a valley of dryness. There was nothing left in those bones. They had even stopped stinking. Sometimes we're so dry that we even stop smelling bad. We just walk around like people with, with nothing. No spirit, no God. We just walk, we just exist. And Ezekiel was looking at these dry bones. Brings me to a very interesting story. I was born and raised a vegetarian. I love my vegetables. I don't see many happy faces, so I know you don't. <laughs> right? So, oh, you do? Oh, God bless you, my brother. I love you with the love of Jesus. Let's have some broccoli after church. Okay, <laughs> sounds like a plan. <laughs> I don't understand how you all eat collard greens. Just beats me all over. <laughs> well, so in, in, when, I was, when I was married and I, and I went to my you know, husband's home, it, he's a large family. When I say large, I really mean large. And they love their meat. You know what I'm saying. And so we have this special dish on the table. It's called biryani. It's made of lamb. And it's got these huge bones. I've never seen those bones in my life anywhere except in my biology laboratory. They were safe inside a glass case. But now they're on the dining table. And I'm like watching them as a new bride. I'm like, what's happening? And he says, you'll, you'll see. You know, you know, it, it was one of those, you'll see. <clears throat> you'll see. And so began the tapping. You know, the marrow has to come out of the bone. You know what? Y'all eat marrow? You're ashamed of eating marrow this morning. Yeah, how do you eat it? Come on, Minister Smith. Oh, he's a gentleman. He's, he's scraping it off like in London. But back home in India, we don't scrape stuff. We pound on stuff. And we blow on stuff. And we suck on stuff. You have like a bone orchestra playing in the middle of nowhere. And my father-in-law, bless his soul, he takes the cake. He'll be like, Rosie, give me the brain. And in my heart, I'm thinking, oh, because you don't have one. <laughs> I was like, forgive me. <laughs> and he's like, you know, they're enjoying this meal. And I asked my husband, what is so interesting about the bones? He says, you don't know until you've eaten it. 
It's the marrow. It's tasty. It's life. It's the sustenance. It's the Holy Spirit within you that gives rise to new things. Amen. It's the regenerative spirit of God that is working within your lives to make you a tasty meal to the one that is what devouring you. Hallelujah. Sucking the moisture out of your very being. Amen. Sometimes when you come to pray, you have no tears in your eyes. You know why? Because he is sucking the moisture out of you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't feel a thing in worship, but that's because he's sucking the moisture out of you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't respond to the word of God the way you ought to respond to the word of God because he's sucking the moisture out of you. Sucking the moisture slowly and steadily, making you dry and brittle and broken and vulnerable. Oh, he's pounding you to dust. Hallelujah. He's bringing you to such a low point in your lives that you think you can never rise again. Hallelujah. Your finances are dry. Gas going $3.99 a gallon. It's not an easy job for the smiths to take us around everywhere. I feel their pain. It's not an easy job for them to feed us. You're paying your bills. You're paying your taxes. Your food prices have gone up. Your education is going all over the place. Right? The leadership is not what it's supposed to be with no disrespect to the authorities over us that the Lord has placed. But this is not a happy place. Amen. It's not a happy place. He's sucking the moisture out of us. Hallelujah. But when the spirit of the Lord. Oh, when the sweet spirit of the Lord. Come on now. When the sweet, sweet spirit of the Lord is stirring you, is moving you, is propelling you. Oh, in worship, you begin crying. When the word is being preached, tears are running down your eyes. You are not ashamed of those tears. For my Lord is restoring the moisture in your lives. Praise God. Praise God for a moisture restoring God. Hallelujah. I feel it in my marrow this morning. I feel it in the depths of my bones. The Lord is beginning his work of restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you indulge this presence of God for a few minutes this morning? Oh, why don't you indulge his spirit a little longer? Oh, tell him, Lord, it's not me. It's not my flesh. It's not my attitude. It's not my personality, Lord. But it's you. Oh, restore my God. Your relationships are broken. Fractured. You cannot repair them any longer. You don't even know what will happen when you repair them. You don't know whether the crack will stay or it will, it will mend or it will fade away. Your finances are going dry. Your doctrine is going dry. Your churches are running empty. Hallelujah. The pews are not being filled with the people who are on the streets enjoying themselves and having a good time. It's the same story in India, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh. Oh, the moisture. Oh, the moisture. It doesn't even make me want to feel human anymore, Lord. I'm so broken, Jesus. I'm so broken, my God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to become a powder very soon, Jesus. My life is going to go down in shambles, Jesus. Hallelujah. Many times I've felt that over the past three years. How will I pick myself up? How will I pay my bills? How will my children live? Our children have become slaves to their devices. We can't go by two hours of service without people watching their WhatsApp messages. 
If you had an offering box, I would urge you to just drop your phones in those boxes. Hallelujah. Nothing is more important than the presence of God. I'm sorry if I'm being forthright and honest. But I was called to tell you these words. Hallelujah. I see people scrolling phones in their churches. What dishonor to the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Everything can wait. But the presence of the Lord will never wait on you. Hallelujah. It will just pass you by. Oh, hallelujah. If you're not sensitive to that spirit, if you're not heeding to the spirit, if you're not being mindful of the moisture that is being restored in your lives, he will just pass you by. Hallelujah. Trust me, that's not a good thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dishonor. When children don't obey their parents, when parents are not considerate to their children. Hallelujah. I stand as a mother in front of you today and I have two young girls. You know what that means, right? That means praying on your knees over time that the enemy will not overcome their souls. Hallelujah. 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 That means keeping my daughter's body safe from the eyes of prying people. That means covering her with modesty and with the spirit of God that she knows that her body is not on display. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray over time as a mother. Because my own is not saved yet. She prays for me. But not to a living God. Amen. Amen. I pray for her that she knows Jesus and she turns to the truth very soon. Amen. Amen. But I know the power of a praying mother. Yes, Your tears are not in vain. Your prayers are not in vain. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when you read the book of Hebrews, it says, the women bring their dead back to life. Your prayers are going to bring the dead back to life. Dead bones are going to come back to life. Hallelujah. If you believe it, why don't you say hallelujah with me this morning? Dead things are going to come back to life. Dead spirits are going to be revived. Dead finances are going to blossom and bloom. I'm no false prophet. I know what it is to be poor. I pay a mortgage on my home every month. I know what it is to pay the tax man. I don't live in wealth. I climb 25 stairs a day every day to reach my house when my knees are saying enough, just go. I know what it is to be poor. I know what it is to be impoverished. I do not come from wealth. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel you. I feel you this morning. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, when you walk through those valley of bones, <laughs> there is God who's guiding you at every step of the way. Hallelujah. He says, look, look, look. Come on, Ezekiel. Come on, come on. Look, look. Look at those bones. Look at those bones. Ezekiel, those are dead. Those have no moisture. Those are brittle. Those are powder. Those are just crumbling down. Ezekiel, these are the ruins. Ezekiel knows that. But look at what Jesus, oh, look at what God does. He turns around and with the audacity that only God can have. I want to say that to you again. We serve an audacious God. <laughs> he asks us to do the most impossible things. Hallelujah. He's in a valley of dry bones. There's not even the smell of death. He's walking. He's having a walking rally there. And God turns to him and asks him, Ezekiel, will these bones live? I'm asking you this morning, will these bones live? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will these bones live, my sister? Will these bones live? Hallelujah. And Ezekiel, being who he was, turns to God and says, I don't know where my next paycheck's coming from. 
I don't know where my next meal's coming from. I don't know whether my kids are going to go through college. I don't know whether my kids are going to make it through school. I don't know if they're going to backslide. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But God, you know. So many uncertainties plague our lives. We have no control over anything. If we are thinking that we are in control of something, we are mistaken. We have no control over anything. Amen. Because he is in control of everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, you want the dry bones to live? I'm asking you this morning. Take a minute here. What's dead and dry in your life? I didn't come this far to just preach a nice sermon and say, Lady Hobday, you did good. No, I didn't come this far for that. I came here to allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to you. Hallelujah. I'm just being a donkey in his hands. I'm just being a significant, insignificant something in his hands. But I want him to receive the glory this morning. I ask you again. Speak to those bones in your life. Prophesy. Prophesy. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. I feel led of the Lord. Why don't you just stand in your places? Hallelujah. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Young people, you need the Spirit of God. Young people, you need the anointing of Jeremiah. Young people, you watch your anointing. It is attractive. It is talented. But watch the anointing of the Lord on your lives. <laughs> Submit to Jeremiah. <laughs> Walk the paths that Jeremiah walked. <laughs> Face the problems that Jeremiah faced. <laughs> oh, be respectful of the authority in your lives. <laughs> oh, Prophesy, my friends. Prophesy to those things that are dead in your life. Dead wombs will be opened in the name of Jesus. Dead things will rise in the name of Jesus. Open your mouths and begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Let me hear the word of the Lord that is emanating from your very souls. Prophesy. Prophesy. Come on, begin to open your mouths and prophesy. Speak over your children. Speak over them this morning. Hallelujah. If your families grab a hold of it, I know it's not the proper thing to do, but just grab them. Hallelujah. Come and grab your children if they're playing music. Grab them. You need them. You need that anointing. Oh, you need that prophecy. Come on over. Hallelujah. Oh, you cannot do this alone. You cannot do this alone. You need the spirit of the living God in your very beings. You need to grab a hold of your children. You need. You need to prophesy. Hallelujah. With the permission of Bishop, I'm asking you guys to go find your families. Hallelujah. Go find your families. Hallelujah. Come on now, the Lord is having his way in this house. Hallelujah. Prophesy. Prophesy over their lives. No more brokenness. No more distractions. Oh, speak, speak over your children. Speak. Speak the prophecy over your children. Speak the prophecy over your spouses. Speak the prophecy over your parents. Speak the words of prophecy over your churches, your families. Come on now. Speak it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. You feel a quickening in your spirits when it's happening. Hallelujah, Jesus. Move, oh God. Move. Prophesy. Open your mouths and prophesy. Samara, 
in the name of Jesus I prophesy over your life this morning that the Lord will use you to millions <laughs> Zion I prophesy over your life this morning that the Lord will make you a vessel of honor hallelujah <laughs> prophesy find someone don't let Jesus pass you by don't let his presence pass you by don't let his ministering spirit pass you by. Mm -hmm.